incentivize voting system. Then probably, so do you go along that kind of a scheme or do you think they give it to the people itself? We don't want to, to provide any fodder to the voter. I mean, the voter is a human being. I mean, he's, he's got the dignity of a human being. He's not a horse or something or a pig to be given, to be given fodder to vote. What is it that has made the election commission as a constitutional body stand down from other constitutional bodies? It's the same bureaucrats who get appointed by the government, but the moment they're an election no, commission, they act differently. You're forgetting. You know, people like Seishin and me and all that, we, we come and we go. We are, we are birds of passage. We don't affect, we didn't affect the election commission. It, it's the people who worked in the commission for, who swatted for years and years the people who were not visible to you and the media. It's those, those, those people who have made the institution what it is. And it is those people who have prevented all of us from doing wrong things, even when we wanted to do wrong things. So they are not visible. That doesn't mean to say they are not there. They are the pith. They are the substance of the tree. Station and I are only the bark, which keeps on falling off and is, is renewed from time to time. You win student hand elections the way it should be. My question to you is, the election commission comes very heavily during elections and asks for transfers of bureaucrats. The bureaucratic system in India is the British legacy, which is the IAB sir, IS, which not only tends to bend to the politician, it takes two hands to clap. What I observe, they tend to crawl. They are the instruments of all cause of corruption and ill will during the elections. In the last elections held in Goa, general elections, the superintendent of police north was suspended and charge sheeted and the director of education was charge sheeted. But they were never conducted a free and fair inquiry, an inquiry, a dubious inquiry, a camouflage inquiry, just for the purpose of holding an inquiry. So basically, at the end of it, it becomes a toothless exercise. How does one have a reform to have a proper inquiry so that these acts where the bureaucrats tend to do all illegal acts and bring the politician to power can be curbed. And you get away from uh, politicians deciding your uh, bureaucrats' fate. It's the politicians who provide the patronage and the support and the shelter. So what we want to do is to cut, to cut that patronage away so as, so as to leave the wrong door completely exposed to the sun. And the Goa sun is nice and, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you sit in the Goa sun for too long, you know what happens. <laughs> shy to put the question to you, so he's prompted me to do it. So with your permission, please, I'll just put it in the house. You see, he says that our electoral system is one man, one vote. Democracy has given us nothing but the right of vote. Yeah. And unfortunately, people are selling our vote. You see, so when we sell our vote, we sell our citizenship. Now, he says that in this system, there is a winner and there is a loser. Not all people go to vote. 70% is the voting percentage here in go. Now, assume the vote winner he is one by five, ten, hundred, two hundred votes. Now, ultimately, the Indian Parliament or the State Assembly does not represent the entire voice of the population of that state or the country. What happens, he says, his question is very important. What happens to the people who have voted for the defeated candidate? And should their voice not be heard in a democracy? I get one vote more than you. I represent the entire constituency. You represent nothing. So if you switch over to proportional re representation, then uh, you know then the then the vote then the representation gets nicely distributed, which means that you know you'll you'll also represent. I'll also represent. You know what happened with uh, Kenya? Maybe about a year ago. They had a presidential election. There were two major tribes, and the representative of the, of, of the slightly bigger tribe got a few more votes. We don't know. I mean, that, that's the way the election commission counted the votes. It might have been different also. But the fact is that the loser refused to accept the position. 
where the other chap would represent the entire country and this chap would get nothing. So they had a civil war. They lost tens of thousands of people who were killed just because of this. This sense, this sense of injustice that you, you or I beat you by a few votes and I represent everything, you represent nothing. So even your sense of justice is, is damaged in first past the post. And that's another reason why I should get rid of it. So, on this point of proportional. We keep talking about how your inspiration figure, I would like to add to that. Uh, but uh, I have two questions. It basically stems from my ignorance, actually, in in this area. We so, all ignorance, are No, I'm not, not completely, <laughs> competent in this, but uh, I've been a master trainer for some time, uh, for one uh, sitting, and um, we spoke, uh, uh, we were told something about right to reject, and I just want some clarity on that. That's one question. And the second question is about the need for electoral reforms. Who will initiate the reforms and, and will these reforms actually see the light of day? Electoral reforms, what? Uh, you had so many commissions and uh, law commissions and, and other committees making recommendations. You had the election commission making recommendations. The privilege is of parliament to decide what to accept, what not to accept. To do what? These recommendations actually materialize because it's, it's up to parliament. You know, the change, like all human beings, if they're lying in a particular position, they don't want to be disturbed. So just uh, one question on right to recall. Is right to recall practiced in uh, any democracy? If, As, if so, how is it uh, uh, effected? I mean, what is the procedure? As far as I know, there is something in Switzerland, but I'm, I'm not very, not very clear about it. Uh, but I can visualize an Indian situation where, in thousands and thousands of cases, people would like to recall because uh, there are very few representatives in India who even visit their constituencies. So. All of them would, would, you know, would qualify to be recalled. Now, if you had that kind of situation, the election commission would not be in a position to handle all these cases simultaneously. It's just not possible because you you would have to you have to take you have to take the you know the views of. Of everybody in the constituency, every every voter in the constituency, and you'd have to make the arrangements very pakka, much more pakka than for the normal election. So, I don't think the election commission would be able to handle it. Could handle a few cases here and there. You could, for example, draw lots and decide that in maybe a thousand constituencies. You uh, you look into five of them, but then that's nothing much more than symbolism. So you can't get away from this problem unless you change the system, which brings me back to my original point. So these these two uh, uh, tools which you have, uh, right to recall and right to reject, actually are the main tools for reformation of political parties. You know the political parties will reform. Uh, with these two tools. So, uh, I think even if it's symbolism, uh, I think, um, though it is a logistical nightmare for the election commission, I think uh, in the longer interest of democracy and reformation of political parties, uh, they should be tried out. It can't be handled. And if it can't be handled, so we shouldn't have it. That's the trouble. And people in this country are too scared to experiment. They just not experiment. So this uh, section 49.4, which says uh, none of the above, is it possible in uh, Indian uh, democracy, in the electoral reforms, to people to go there and say, 
I am voting, but I don't want to register my vote in favor of any one of these guys. Now, I've just, done it. I've uh, done it in the last election. I'm just, no, but what, what would be the system under which, how will it be operated if, if it is implemented? It can't be part of the, the formal system. Eh? You, you can be given that register to make your comments. That's all. Unless the law changes. The law is, hasn't been changed. Government sponsored advertisements. You see, what is happening is the election commission bars advertisements by the government only, I think, when the election process starts. But immediately, some months before, one month before the election, you find so many government sponsored advertisements preaching, you know, the good achievements of the government, showing photographs of ministers, etc. So, would you like to say something like this? Should the election commission say within six months before the election can process all such government advertisements, you know, sponsored advertisements should be banned? Yeah, so the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The code of conduct. The code of conduct is there to handle these cases. But that is hardly easy. Sure. Six months before, code of conduct must be applicable six months. Well, if it's... If it's... No, if it's, if it's more, if it's six months, if it's more than six months, people will not even relate the two. So there's no advantage to the government to do that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, I would like uh, Dr. Kodasa like to say a few words, please. Uh, the lady in the back asked whether we will ever see reforms in the local rural system. Madam, one by one, things are falling in place. The RTI has done a lot to, to think. Settle the thing in a positive way. Mr. Anna Hazare and they are doing a lot. PIL is there. I feel as a citizen, that yes, things will improve. Yes, at what is peak, that will depend upon you and me. But things will certainly improve. Thank you. Thank you. On that positive note, I think it's time to say thank you to our speaker, Mr. Lindo. Thank you very much. And as a token of appreciation, can I just <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for taking time out with us. Thank you.